It has never been right to kill your patients, and yet you've got consent to drop bombs they won't live through to regret. Radiate them entirely from the inside to the outside, but the dawning realization is that the victims cannot hide as they sit with the blood all pumping in their veins, checking their pulse to see how much time remains until they're carted out. Just another toe tag, and the coroner zips up yet another black bag. Recognition is the lowest form of understanding, yet you slap a name on something and you're suddenly commanding, as though you're the only person who knows what to do, but the people without white coats know about as much as you. They can recognize the pain, and they know that it's a stall, years of people in your care and you've never cured it all. They voice that they are hopeful that their loved ones will pull through, but beneath it all they know that the good outcomes are few. So they sit and hold the hands of the people they still love, knowing that they soon will leave this place and to cherish moments of full coherence in the time when the whole family's together, as though this were just another storm the family could weather. It's the end of an era they all know within, but their forceful denial won't deny death the win. When he swoops with his cloak and his scythe there in hand, slices at the soul, drags it back to his land so the patient flatlines, and you hang your head. You don't have to tell the family, they know that he's dead. It doesn't phase you as much as it did years ago, when you still questioned your faith and wondered where we all go. When the candle was snuffed and our lifeline is cut, leaving survivors with guilt in their gut, so you finally stopped caring about such questionings, because the doubting left you thinking that you just did little things, so you tried to cut it out, leave all that in the past, trying to convince yourself that your doings would last like your time here on earth was going to count when it ended, and your soul would escape on angel's wings suspended, but some nights, some nights, when you're by yourself in the loneliness you dread, little voices come and whisper the thoughts deep within your head saying people don't get what they deserve, not usually. They only get what they get. And any fool could see that receiving any hand doesn't mean it wasn't stacked, doesn't mean the cards were shuffled, doesn't mean they weren't tracked. Could be the same ace you had was given to two. And the other ace holder played it faster than you, leaving you without the years you were going to live, striking from you all the phrases and the love you were to give. Like a river struck a dam, your lifespan was shorter. You would sooner take the train of death, handing Obel to the porter, because sometimes it doesn't matter how well you played the game. Death isn't specific, and he treats us all the same. Age, rank, affiliation won't hold his scythe at bay when he's marked you as his target that he's next to take away, and the voices in your head speak this into your ear. Just when you think it's silent, and you've nothing to fear. You've put your time in at the hospital, and you know you're doing good, but you're physically not well. And why isn't quite understood. You should be happy to be helping those with the problems you're resolving, but you begin to feel the hamster wheel by itself revolving. No longer are you choosing, though your choices led you here. The voices tell you different, but you don't let yourself hear. What are you doing? Is it truly what you want? Was life just meant for misery and happiness a taunt? You're surrounded by the ailing and you look them in the eye. Your oncologist senses approximate when they'll die. You feel like a colonel leading unknowing young men to the front lines to get shot at again and again, promising the mothers as you take the boys away that their sons will be fine and live another day when you know in your heart that, that isn't the case. And most would be shipped home flag over their face. Those remaining are surrounded by the chosen of the draft, the unstable cannon fodder and the ones that love this craft. Yet whether in your care or out there in the field, the soldiers that you know cannot force death to yield. While well, he may get distracted and pick off the others first, sometimes it's not the pain but anticipation that's the worst. When the strike is slow and silent, like a bullet that will glide, as your eyes were peeled forward to strike you in the side, spilling forth the gray that mattered, and your buddy whirls round, looking for the shooting culprit, but he's nowhere to be found. Now that death's incoming, he goes through the motions. He's seen it all before, the incantations and potions. The desperation amuses him, but the thing he loves most is slowly pressing fear into the body of a host. And when it's ripe and lovely, dripping when they speak, that's when he knows he's got them. That's when he knows they're weak. Your soldiers fall beside their foes. All you do is hold the clipboard, looking frantic at the file of every single lost ward. It wasn't me, it was death! But that's not a diagnosis. Claiming that you see him is a sure sign of psychosis. 
There has to be someone on whom to lay blame, you think, as you cross out name after name, but there's no one to turn to, and no one who cares as the bombs kill street vendors peddling wares. The blood pumps through veins and onto the street, life highways and lifeless paths do meet. You stand as a guide in an unknown country. You fail as a guide in an unknown country. Oh, woesome fate. Ill-gotten ends, your mental state both breaks and bends as finger-pointing spins back around like compass needle near ferrous ground. You alone administer tags on toes that enter those ugly black bags. I just cannot take it, you yell to the skies and the rhythmic metronome sputters and dies. The world of medicine isn't what I'd hoped it'd be. It doesn't comfort because I still feel like a facilitator of death. I take money and give death. I take money and give death. I take money and give death and I never wanted this. I never wanted this. I never wanted to spend my life watching people die. I could never be a father or a mother. Because I couldn't create a masterpiece in a world where death destroys senselessly and terribly. I couldn't bring life to something from love, something I'd love unconditionally, because there are no guarantees that this something wouldn't die before me. There was no reassurance that I won't come home, enter through the front, walk the stairs, and enter the nursery, and have to stop myself from screaming because that child is gone forever! No one can promise that this will not happen. Death is the only promise that is never broken. With this in your head, you snap awake, ready once more your position to take. Pick up the clipboard, hope that you don't need it, as you grab the obits and silently read it. Count on your fingers the men you have left. You stand as their colonel and of doubts you're bereft. You'll lead them to death, or a slight length in life, facilitate treacherous bed, or a merciful knife. But death is a constant, and you hold this fact true. Not concerned as appearance coincides with you, for you stand as a guide in an unknown country. You're known as the guide in the unknown country. Welcome, dear death, O oh bringer of ends, my closest of morbid and sick twisted friends. I speak the language, consolation abounds, for the veins pumping blood which ends up on the ground. I was responsible for the toe tags say I am. But let us return to our usual program.